Hi, I'm Tracy Shearer, and thanks so much for joining me on my storytelling series. What are we going to go over today? Well, we're going to talk about telling a story versus storytelling, and also the mindset to free your voice. We're going to get into that a little bit about kind of the, the way to think about things in order to really tell your story, because I run into a lot of people that struggle with that. But first, let's go through the whole idea about um, telling a story versus storytelling. So in the first episode, I kind of talked about my Home Depot story. It didn't really happen to me, obviously. I just made that up, right? But when we think about um, telling a story versus storytelling, I talked about some of the things that happened at Home Depot and how I felt and da, 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 da. So it gets more into the storytelling. But sometimes, and you guys know these people, right? They'll tell you something and there's really like no point to their story, <laughs> right? So they'll say, um, I'll just pick the grocery store. Okay. So um, you know what? I went to the grocery store because I realized that I was out of champagne. I needed some champagne because we're celebrating Bob's 25th anniversary next week. And I realized we didn't have any champagne. So I had to go to the grocery store and you know what? It was really icy out on the roads and I was kind of worried about sliding, but luckily I got there. Okay. Thank heavens. Um, they had salted the pavement. You know, my, my uncle Joe had an issue one time when the pavement wasn't salted and he went down Now he was going to sue them, but he decided not to, even though we told him he should have. So, and by this point, you're usually like, okay, so what about the champagne? Right. So you get, you get them back and they're like, oh yeah. Okay. So I got the champagne and um, I, you know, was going in there to get it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And so I, you know, because, you know, Bob really likes this particular type of champagne and they didn't have it. And so I had them look in the back and then they still couldn't find it. And then they said I had to come back on Thursday. But, you know, I really can't come back on Thursday because I have to take my mom in for um, an appointment. And then, you know, I have to get my nails done. And then and by this point, you're like, okay, why are you telling me about getting the champagne for Bob's anniversary? There's got to be something that happened, right? So that's telling a story. You're just telling kind of a story of what happened. But it's not really what we think about when it comes to storytelling. I mean, sure, telling a story does accomplish certain things, right? It, it's factual. It tells you what happened. I went to the grocery store. I wanted to get some champagne. The roads were icy. They had salted the parking lot. I even told you about my uncle Bob who <laughs> went down. And <laughs> we thought he should sue. I mean, there's all these like silly, like factual things I gave you. But do you really feel anything at the end of it, it provided that I ended actually ended the story, right? You didn't cut me off. But Normally at the end of that type of thing, you're like, okay, so you got the champagne? Okay. Like, you don't really feel anything. There's no point to the story, really. It's not taking you on a journey. It's not really connecting with you, mostly, most of the time. And we know people who do this all the time. We know people that we know. Um <clears throat> maybe somebody asks you something and you're not really close to them. And so you don't really tell them the whole nine yards. You just say, yeah, you know what? I had an achy tooth. I had to go see the dentist. He's taking some x-rays. Uh, we're going to monitor it for a while. And we're going to see because the filling was kind of close to the nerve. Okay. Maybe somebody else, I'm telling them a little bit more of the details. And maybe they didn't just ask me, I'm telling them because I'm scared. So there's a difference between just telling a story to somebody and storytelling. And the reason why I make that distinction is a lot of times I get, I, I've met people before. They're like, I have this great story to tell. And then I look at their stuff or they've shared their stuff with me and I can see that story like in there but they don't know how to story tell yet. They know how to tell the facts and get the stuff down, but they don't really know how to make it into a storytelling type of a situation. 
So they've got like the raw talent, which is so exciting, right? Because you want to help somebody get better. But there's a lot of people that just don't understand how to, how to storytell. And some people are naturals at it. My dad was, oh my gosh, I tell you, he could weave the biggest yarn. Uh, he could make you believe anything. He was so incredible with his storytelling. And I do believe that's where I got the skill from. So some people have some natural skill, but other people can learn it. You can definitely learn it. So, so telling a story does, it gives information out. It's factual. It's still important right? Because you're still conveying something. You can still say, um, you know, uh, I, I got to work and I noticed there was a leak on the floor and I called maintenance. <laughs> they came to, they, they came to fix it. And they said, you know what, there's been a leak in the ceiling for a while. And we're kind of worried about the da da da. It's still conveying information. It's still letting you know what's going on. It can still be important, but storytelling is more about emotion and the journey. And the reason why I mentioned these two things is because when you are telling a story, you don't want to leave somebody unaffected. Remember in the last episode, we talked about the fact of connection and empathy and those things that uh, you really are building with whoever's listening to your story or reading your story or watching your story. And that's what storytelling is all about, is that connection. It's not static. You want to take somebody on a journey and you want to help them feel something. And what I mean by a journey is it doesn't have to be just like the plot of a book, right? So what I mean by that is, you know, I absolutely love Star Wars. People who who, um, know me know that. And you can look at the journey of Star Wars, you know, Luke Skywalker, he's on uh, Tatooine, you know, he thinks that he's going to um, really try to escape off and he's getting thwarted. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi comes into his life. Well, actually the droids do, but you know what I'm saying? And then he ends up going on this epic quest and meeting a princess, meeting Han Solo and Chewbacca and everything else. And it's down to him to save pretty much the galaxy, right? That's taking people on a journey. That's taking a reader on a journey, a watcher on a journey. Harry Potter books, same thing. You know, in all of the different books as they build on each other, Harry's changing, he's growing, he's he's starting out as not knowing anything, and then in the end, willing to sacrifice. And in case you haven't read Harry Potter books, I don't want to give it away. But he goes from I'm just a kid to I'm an adult and I'm ready to do the really difficult and hard decision. And so there's a journey there as well, not only in plot, but also in uh, how we are seeing those themes played out. So how can you take somebody on a journey if it's on a fiction book? Well, you can take somebody on a journey based on what you want them to get out of your book. So say you're writing a a nonfiction book about uh, Chernobyl, whatever, or about World War II or something like that. I'll just throw those out. You're not just going to say, even in a nonfiction book, you're going to say this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, because people can, can grab that. You have an angle for the book you're writing. There's an angle of what you're trying to say and how you're trying to say it. Because there's there's tons of different books. Let's take the World War II one, right? There's tons of books on World War II. What are you trying to highlight? Are you trying to highlight the women in World War II? Are you trying to highlight this one particular family and what they went through? Are you trying to highlight, um, you know, a scientist that was uh, working against his will? And there's all these documents now that have come out. You know, what's your take? What's your take on it? And what are you trying to say? Because even in nonfiction, there's usually a message that's coming across. Same thing with memoir. You're writing your memoir. You're telling your personal stories. And you want your reader 
to come away with something. Not only a feeling, but also a message. So maybe for your memoir, you want the, your reader to come away with, if she can do it, I can. Maybe the message is, um, if you don't stand up, that person's going to do it to somebody else. You need to own your, own your power type of thing. Maybe the message is, I'm not alone. Who knows what the message is, right? But you've got a message that you're trying to convey. And the way you convey that message is taking the reader on a journey. And what I mean by that is you don't all of a sudden hit them with the message right in the beginning because they need to learn and warm up to that message. They need to realize why you are saying those things, why your book is saying those things. You can't just hit them with, you know, um, this is awful and blah, blah, blah. You have to explain like why it was awful and the things that you tried to do and the things that you tried to shift and change and the struggles that you had and the, the issues that you had. And then you came out on this other end now and you realized, well, holy cow, I was holding myself back. And if I would have just <laughs> done it differently, I could have been all the way where I wanted to be this point instead of this point, but I didn't know. And that's why I'm writing my book is to tell you so that you know to stop holding yourself back. Just an example, right? But you have to take that reader on the journey to get there. Think about any of the books or movies that you've watched. If in the first five minutes, somebody dies that you have never met and they haven't played it up to where you have an emotional connection, are you really going to care? No. You need to take them on that journey so that what happens in your book, the message you're putting out there has meaning and can resonate with them. So whether or not it's fiction, nonfiction, personal development, same thing. Say your book is, is about weight loss. You don't just say, here are the five steps, take it, do it. No. You are taking them through that journey to get them to the point where they're going to want to do those five steps. So they understand how important those five steps are. They understand they can do those because you've done them, that they're not out of their reach, that this isn't going to be the upteenth time if they've tried something and failed, that this time it's going to work for them. You need to take them on a journey. So that's what storytelling is about. Where you start out in A is not where you end up in Z. You are transforming your characters. You're transforming in your story. You are transforming whatever your angle is in your nonfiction all the way through. It's like the, it, we thought it was this, now it's this. Or we, we know it's this and we didn't realize. And now, oh my God, everything looks different because we now know all this stuff. And now we're here. So that is you know, the journey that you want to take your reader or listener, whoever it is on to get your message across. Because you can't just, as you know, slap somebody with something. Think about um, whenever you've had um, difficult decisions or other people that you've tried to help through because they're making like one of these big life-changing decisions. It takes them a while, usually, because they have to get used to the idea of something. They have to run through the different options. They have to talk to different people and get input. They have to maybe do some research. They have to, there's, in order to get to where they need to go. Um, so I have a friend that is, uh, her mom's gonna go into an assisted living facility. Do you think that she decided that overnight? No. Do you think that she talked to people about it? Yep. Think she talked to her mom about it? Absolutely, her mom is, was definitely involved in it. Um, do you think that she did research? Yep. Do you think she visited a bunch of different places? Yep. Do you think she thought about what it would be like if she didn't do it? Yep. 
there's all these things that she went on this journey of her own to hear. So we have that in our personal lives all the time, but we don't always think about it in storytelling. So you want to take somebody on that journey so that the message gets through. And we're going to talk about themes and stuff in, a, in another episode, but just to get an idea. So when you're telling a story, like my grocery store story about the champagne for Bob and his anniversary, um, that gives you information. It doesn't really take anywhere. It doesn't make you feel anything. Um, and, you know, that's the whole thing is that is by having that journey, then your reader, your listener, whoever you're talking to is going to feel something. So remember I said, you can't just slap people in the first five minutes with somebody dying and they don't even know who they are. By taking somebody on a journey, they actually care. They care about you and what you're saying, especially if it's your memoir or nonfiction, personal development, fiction, they care about the characters and what's going to happen. Um, There are some characters it's so funny. I was just watching something um, just recently and I was like, oh man, I really want to kill that character. <laughs> I really hope somebody kills that character. And I'm not necessarily like that, but I was like, man, they're just awful uh, because I got invested in the people that this character was being so awful to. And so I was like, oh my God, I don't want them hurt anymore because they spent time building those characters and getting my buy in to them. So you make people feel by taking them on the journey. They can feel um, happy or sad or empowered or confident um, or heard. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different things that you can make somebody feel. I've had people that have cried during my books and the places I cried when I wrote them. So a storytelling is really about that journey and the emotion. Okay, so on to the mindset, because I've had a lot of people that have told me, um, you know what, I don't want to dig deep. I don't really want to talk about my personal stuff. It's personal. Well, yeah, of course it's personal. But I always say, why do you want to write what you want to write? So to say it's a book, why do you want to write? Usually I get the answer. I want to help people. Okay. This is for nonfiction and and memoir and that type of thing, personal development. Okay. So uh, how are you going to help people? Well, I'm going to tell my story. Okay. So you're just going to tell them surface stuff? Um, Well, uh, what are you going to tell them what you went through when your husband left you? Well, I'm going to mention it. Okay. So do you think they're going to really feel a connection with that? Well, maybe. I I think so. Okay. So what if you read a story and then I like role play it with them? What if you read a story that had X, Y, Z? And they're like, oh, I'm like, think about the stories that affected your life. Were they surface? No. So you have to dig deep. Realize that by digging deep, you are going to help so many people. By digging deep in fiction, you are not only going to help people, you're going to really affect them. Because as remember, fiction makes it palatable and accessible. A lot of the things you're talking about, a lot of like really difficult topics you can explore in fiction. And it makes it more accessible. But by you digging deep and being authentic, because people can tell when you're being authentic. And I was very authentic in my fiction with what my characters were feeling and people recognize that they could feel it, even though it was, it was me, but yet it was from another character and people pick up on that authenticity and they feel it, which is why you need to dig deep and be vulnerable. The other thing too, that I get a lot is everybody's gone through the same thing. I don't want to talk about it. My journey and and struggle isn't more important than somebody else's. And it might be the situation of, um, say, a miscarriage. I know several of my friends who have gone through that. Or it could be um, losing a spouse. Or it could be, say, cancer for me. Have there been a lot of people that have gone through all those things? Absolutely. 
but everybody's story is going to be different because we're all different. We bring different viewpoints and takes and feelings and experiences to what we went through. And we all react in a way that is us. It's unique. So you might go through a divorce and somebody else might go through a divorce and you guys both handled it differently. You both reacted differently. You both had different experiences. It brought up childhood memories for you because something happened with your dad. And maybe um, he left the family. And so it just brought back these feelings again of like, oh my God, oh my God. Maybe somebody else has a completely different thing because um, something else happened and um, they ended up having abandonment issues. And then they're doing it to somebody else. You know, there's, or maybe somebody divorced them and they're feeling the same thing. There's tons of different things that can come up. Same thing with the cancer stuff. So don't feel like nobody wants to hear your story because other people have gone through the same thing. Sure, the same event, but how you handle it and how you process it and how you work through it and how you come out the other end is you. It's it's you. So don't ever feel like you can't share a story because somebody else has had it. I see this in fiction writers all the time. I can't write this because the plot's similar to blah, blah, blah. Okay. Put some twists in there, but there's been 12 million chosen one plots. (laughs) The chosen one story, everybody writes that one. Um, But everybody's chosen story, chosen one story is different, right? There's a lot of things that you might see out there, but your story is different. So always think about that. But I've had people go, I don't want to share because, you know, nobody wants to hear it. Also get it out of your head that you're saying that your situation is worse. If you don't present it that way, when you're talking about it, people are not going to take it that way. You're just presenting your version of it. And that's your truth. Somebody else is going to have a different one. So don't think that somebody's going to think that you're trying to say, my thing is more, you know, horrible than, you know, your loss. You're not, as long as you're coming from a place of authenticity and your why is there. So if you want to help people or you want to heal yourself or you want to heal other people, I mean, who knows what, so so many different reasons people write books. And when I've talked to, to my clients, they always come out with different reasons. Like I might think, okay, they want to help people. They want to do this and this and this, but a lot of times there's other underlying reasons. Like my friend went through this and I don't want anybody to ever go through this again, or I lost a brother to this, Um, you know, things that you might not expect. And so we're all different. So remember that you have your own unique voice and your story is always going to be different than somebody else's. It doesn't matter. It has some similarities, Uh, but how you come through it is always what's going to make it unique to you. And when you dig deep, you get vulnerable. Remember, it causes that lean in because you're not just telling me I went to the doctor. You're saying I went to the doctor and I found out I got, I have cancer. Whoa, my gosh, I'm leaning in. And you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm totally leaning in you're sharing with me. You're telling me a story. You're letting me in. When people let you in and when you're vulnerable, it's amazing what magic can happen. I know it's scary. Okay. I'm there with you. I know it's scary, but it's so important because you're not doing it. I always think about, about this when it comes to vulnerability, you're not doing it because you're hoping for a certain reaction. It's not calculated. You're being vulnerable because you really need to share what you experienced and you need to be truthful and real. And you're saying it because you need to say it. I've had so many people tell me I have to write my story. I have to. And that's what fuels a lot of people. You're not doing it because you hope people go, oh man, that's so sad. No, you're doing it when it comes from that place of real, true authenticity and people feel it 
And when you share and you're vulnerable, we have that connection and you know you're not alone. So hopefully that will help in your mindset with sharing. And hopefully you guys know the difference between storytelling and telling a story now. And I hope that this gave you some good insight and maybe sparked some different things that you might think about writing yourself. Uh, because remember, you can just write for yourself if you want to, or you can think about writing a book or perhaps a blog or who knows. Um, the whole universe is open to you when it comes to writing. That's what I think is so fun. And it doesn't matter your age or anything else about you. It's never too late to start. So I hope this helps. And until next time, um, keep thinking of different story ideas and storytelling and listen to the stories around you when people start telling you and you're going to start thinking that's telling a story and that's storytelling. All right. Till next time. Thanks. Bye.